Welcome to another episode of Lake Dredge Appraisal. I'm ACCAA licensed appraiser, David Parker, and today we'll be seeing more objects that were dredged from the lake. In this episode, we'll see what's coming up from under East Bay. All right, now, Captain Hire, why don't you tell us a little about how you dredged this piece here? Well, I was dredging Hughes Point, and I heard this big clunk. And this was on your barge? Yeah, and the clunk was something hitting the housing of my sediment pump. And, uh... All right. Now, what you have here is a collection of chicken wire and, and lake debris. Uh -huh. You see how there's, there's loose wire here? Okay, I see it. Well, that is what gave it away. That is clearly chicken wire. Okay, I figured. Now, chicken wire is worth about 40 cents per square yard. But uh. this is very tangled, and that depresses its value. I depressed the chicken wire at about 15 cents. Oh, okay. And this debris and trash is worth three cents, so my total appraisal is 18 cents. It's a pot. That's right, Virgil. This is a cooking pot. You can see there's a little bit of the original pot showing here through the dredged sediment and benthic matter. Yes, I see that. So we can determine that this pot is made of tin. Mm -hmm. And you can see here there is some damage to the piece. Well, it might have gotten mangled in the suction hose. That's not going to affect the value a whole lot. Now, the raw tin in this pot is worth about 45 cents. Oh. Wow. But you would need to get all this plastic off of here first, which, which would cost you more than that, so you would lose money on the deal. Oh, well, then I might just hang on to it. That's fine. Although. I would stress that you should not prepare food with this pot. Why not? Well, it has been at the bottom of a lake for as long as seven decades, so there's going to be a lot of built-up bacteria and just slime. Well, I would wash it. Yeah, I understand, Virgil, but that bottom layer of grime is pretty well set in, and I'm even... I'm going to scrub even... it with a Brillo. Okay. That's fine. We just, again... You should not prepare food with that pot. It could make you very ill. Welcome to another episode of Lake Dredge. There's something wrong with the sound. Here's Mike. Ah, here it is. Probably wasn't as dented as before, but I was using an auger suction rig and it just kind of got messed up on its way up to the screw. Where did you dredge this? Mid Lake. Well, it looks like an aluminum can, although we can't, can't be sure yet. When did you dredge it? About three days ago. Okay. You should really, really bring items in just as soon as you dredge them, okay? Sure. It's just that Santonio doesn't care much about that kind of stuff. Well, here we do care. We are not San Antonio. Let's, uh, let's clean it off. Okay, now this is interesting. This can represents the green slashes, silver blotches design introduced in 1995. It's from 1995? Not so fast. Please. See, this can design ran until 1998. So we'll never know how old it is. Well, now, as you can see, it does not have the wide mouth, which Mountain Dew introduced in January of 1996. So that means we can pinpoint this can's date to 1995. 
How much do you think it's worth? Two cents. Of course, it's worth five cents if the deposit machine accepts it, but it may not, and I have to remain conservative in my appraisals. Sure. Thank you so much for bringing in this dredged item. This was great. Now let's update our dredge totals. All right, Virgil, what are we looking at here? I have no idea. Okay, well, on cursory inspection, I would say this is an iPhone. Excuse me? An, an iPhone is a, a very popular type of cell phone that people often drop in lakes. I and don't understand As a result, all. we see a lot of them dredged up for appraisal. Well, I've got a lot more in here. Okay, okay, well, it looks like you've got about a hundred iPhones here and each one of these is worth about $300 new. For this little thing? These are worth that much? <laughs> Slow down, Virgil. See, you just made the classic dredger mistake of not factoring in water damage. Oh, yeah. yeah. And in this case, the water has depreciated the value by roughly 100%. Can I use it myself? Do any of them turn on? Mm. Well, mm. They, they would need to turn on in order to function, and these almost certainly do not turn on. So no, you stop right there. I've embarrassed myself enough. Good dredge not too long ago up uh, Pakequa Lakeway. I don't know if I call it memorable. <laughs> Although I suppose I'm remembering it now, so it is a memorable dredge. <laughs> you got me. So what have you dredged up today? Well, I was doing some suction dredging near where they're putting in the pylons for the new bridge near the creek. And it started to smell pretty different. Mm-hmm. Strong odor usually indicates decomposing organic matter. So I've been dredging since I was too young to dredge, and I've never smelled anything like this. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Well, okay, judging, just, just, oh, God, I, I'm sorry, I cannot concentrate. Well, I can close it back up. No, 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 that I won't, I won't be able to appraise it. Okay. Ugh. Let's do it. Get it all out there. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, God, it's just like the worst sulfur. Okay. Oh. Oh. Where is the object? What object? You, you want me to, to appraise this, this putrid silt? Well, it just started smelling so much, I... I uh, well, uh, silt isn't worth very much, smell or no smell. Uh, if you were able to, uh, so, excuse me, if you were able to dredge considerably more, you could probably sell it as fill, but I, I, I doubt that it would be worth your effort. Oh, oh, oh so sorry. <laughs> if you don't like what I'm telling you, there are plenty of unscrupulous appraisers out there who will tell you exactly what you want to hear. Oh, come on, Kel. I meant nothing by it. I appreciate your honesty.
read you something good today. I'm sure you have. Okay. Well, this is a briefcase. It's Kenneth Cole. I would guess it was manufactured in the 1980s since it looks identical to a briefcase I own. Lucky man. Actually, it doesn't look like this briefcase was in the lake for very long. And if we clear away some of the algae here, we can see that it's actually monogram DTP. Those are my initials. Oh. Pete. Hmm? Pete, this is my briefcase. I had it on my sister's houseboat yesterday. It must have fallen into the water without my noticing. Is that so? Well, look, I mean, this is a highly unusual circumstance, but seeing as it is my briefcase, I, I, I think the only thing to do is for me to just take it back. Oh, uh, no. Pete, come on now. I mean, this was a, a gift from my late father. Mm, it's a sticky one. I need those papers. Okay, my mortgage refinancing application is in there. It's a $300 briefcase, but with the damage, I'd appraise it at $675. But come on, Pete, this belongs to me. It belongs to whoever dredges it out of the lake. That's Dredger's Law. I am quite familiar with Dredger's Law, but this is a very special circumstance. Here. I will pay you for it now. Yeah, I'll take my chances at auction. I need that. Tonight, conventional appraiser wisdom is upended by a soggy old backpack. Coming up on Helcomb County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal. And tell your wife the fresh spring rolls were delicious. I will. Thank you. Now tell us about this bucket. Just a short dragline dredge. Nothing fancy. Can't believe my luck. It's a fine bucket to be sure. Oh, now this is interesting. Take a look here. Leavings bucket for J.W. Booth, Baltimore, Maryland. What do you make of it, Kim? Well, I'll tell you what, my friend. I am willing to bet that this bucket belonged to famed presidential assassin John Wilkes Booth. This is the bucket he evacuated into during the 12 day manhunt after he shot Abraham Lincoln in the head. Oh, wow. Of course, dozens of counterfeit Booth waste buckets have surfaced over the years, but the distinct flourishes and the W lead me to believe that this is the real deal. I'm having a little trouble wrapping my head around it. Well, obviously, this, this is a priceless item. However, it should be in a museum. What's the number, though? Sorry? You said priceless, but there has to be a number. Regardless of the specific number. San Antonio num said 300000 Say they could hook me up with some Lincoln guy in the forge who could pay me at least that much. So? I, I don't understand why you want me to appraise it if you've already... It doesn't matter. You have to appraise it, guild laws. Well, obviously you should consider donating it to... I think my brother may be overstating its value somewhat. I would say 50,000. No thanks. I take my chances at the forge. Tell us the story behind this. Well, uh, I was dredging uh, near Cranst Beach, and I found these. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, Th these are coins. Yeah, what are they worth? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I, you see, I can't appraise coins. Can't or won't? Look, I have already said more than I should. Please just take these to a coin appraiser before I land myself in any more hot water.
All right, Virgil, why don't you tell us what you brought in today? I have no idea. Okay. Well, this is a ballpoint pen. It's a fairly common brand. You can find this pen in drug stores. They sell it in, in packs of 10. Mm -hmm. Now, much of this item's value depends on whether or not it can still write. I'm just going to... There's a little something there. Let's see if we can't. It's a little. Oh, that's, that's mud. Okay, I think I'm ready to give my appraisal. The show has run out of time and the pen appraisal will be completed next week. If you wish to learn the appraised value of the pen, tune in next week. We got this for you, Kim, what do you think? Oh, wow. This is a 1973 Epiphone PR650N, wow, just, Beautiful. Kind of guitar? Yeah. Yeah, wow. How? <laughs> Still works pretty good. Hound on the dock. He got daddy's mouth in his jaw. Hound on the dock. He a demon on the lake. I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill I hound on the dock, boom, boom Hound on the dock, boom, boom How? Oh. Is that an old song? <clears throat> Not to my knowledge, it isn't, no I would say this is worth about six dollars in this condition, unfortunately It's badly deteriorated and the tuning pegs are rusted do you mind if I just play a little longer? They like it. Okay. Dirty Daisy, yo, yo. Dirty Daisy, here comes the storm. Dirty Daisy, An announcement yo, from the Lake yo. Committee. The beach remains closed due to dangerous levels of silt and diesel exhaust. Okay, now Hiram, you dredged this item out of the lake, yes? Yep, dredged it out just this morning. That's fine. Now I've had a chance to look at this and what you have here is a hat box. Hat box? Okay. Well, the, the slime patterns along here suggest that this has been at the bottom of the lake for some time, but there's a lot of muck scratched away around the clasp here, which suggests that the box was opened recently. Really? Now, Hiram, did you happen to open the box before you brought it in? Nope. Because it's not a problem. I mean, it's only natural to open a box like this if you find it. I just need to know because it will impact my appraisal. Nope, I didn't. Definitely. So you didn't scratch off the mud around the clasp or take anything out of the box? or? Sir, I would tell you if I did. 
keep in mind, if there were a hat in the box, it would make it a little more valuable. As it is, uh, I would appraise the hat box at about 60 cents. 60 cents. <laughs> Thank you. It's a nice hat you're wearing. This is my wife's hat. This week, a toilet cut perfectly down the center raises questions. Coming up on Helcom County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to give a quick update on an appraisal I made several months ago here on this show. I appraised a 1990s pre-Mattel era Whammo hula hoop that Charlotte Danvers dredge from near the Chinook Pines campground. I said that that hoop would sell for $2.50 at auction, but just last week in Washington State, a hula hoop from roughly the same time period was purchased for $3. I've already written to Charla to apologize for my inaccurate appraisal, but I also owe you, my audience, an apology. I mean, here I am, going up against those who will say or do anything to sex up their appraisals, and I can't even give an accurate market value of a dredged hula hoop. Anyway. Okay, let's get to more appraising. Okay, so this appears to be a 20 ounce Coca-Cola bottle, circa 2009. Oh, great. It is worth five cents if you take it across state lines and uh, return it for its deposit value. Hmm. Seems like a bit of a pain. Yes, it can be, but what you might want to... Okay, that, that applause you hear is my crew. Apparently this is the 1,000th plastic bottle I've appraised. Wow, congratulations. Why don't I just give it to you as a keepsake? No, oh, thank you, but no. I would certainly lose my license for that. Always a pleasure to have you at the table. Okay. Where did you get these eggs? I dredged them. You dredged them? Mm. Well, what we have here are some eggs belonging to a species of snake called the Allegheny Beach Snake. These snakes are invasive to this area and are quite virulent. Where exactly did you dredge these eggs? In the water. Fine. These snakes are quite popular with black market snake breeders and since the eggs are intact, you can expect them to be quite the attraction at auction. Uh-huh. But Pete, these snakes wipe out all the frogs and fish in any lake they're found in and turn their habitats into algae ravaged swamps. The lake, as you know it, will cease to be. Something to think about. Pete, there's nothing to think about. It's not even in your interest. You're looking at the loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars of lifetime dredging income. All these other lakes. Oh, yeah, sure. Have you tried dredging the lake over in Harwinton recently? Why don't you take your barge over to Harwinton, Pete? See if you can dredge up anything but a, but a big pile of writhing, hissing, Allegheny beach snakes. Okay. Pete, I am asking you to destroy these eggs. In fact, I am refusing to appraise them unless you do. Well, I think that would go against appraiser's regulation. You wouldn't want to do that, would you, Kim? With the trouble you're in?
together the eggs are worth 10 to $15 a piece. Mm. But Pete, picking through someone else's dredging spoils is one thing, but destroying this town's dredging industry for 30 to $40 is something completely different. $40, huh? Pete, I'm asking you, as a colleague, I'd like to get something for these eggs. You want to? Tell us what you have here? Yeah, I got a stereo. I dredged it in the pond. Mm hmm Must have been a pretty shallow dredge, huh? Oh, yeah, you know, like, it was in the pond, so that's why there's all this mud on it, you know? Not a lot of water damage. Startlingly little sedimentary layering here. Yeah, you know, it's a good stereo. Pneumatic dredge? What? You using a pneumatic dredger? Oh yeah, man, you know, pneumatic all the way, you know? So what do you think, like 75, 100? You dredged this near the orange diving board? Yeah, yeah, there was a diving board there, yeah. There is no diving board at the lake. Yeah, okay, yeah, but you just said there was one, you know, so I'm just, you wanna know what I think? I don't know. What I think you did here is I think you stole this stereo, then you threw a little mud on it to make it look like it came from the lake. No, nah, man. Look, I'm not gonna call the police, but I am gonna give you one last chance. Tell me where you got this stereo. From the pond, man. I think you should go. Oh, come on, man. Please go before I get angry. I don't dredge unless I already know what's coming up the hose. Some people call it a sixth sense. I just tell them I know the lake. Would you like to tell us about? Yeah, I was uh, dredging the uh, sandy patch in the west end of the lake and this board got sucked up. Okay, well. It's hard to make a precise judgment because of the lake absorption factor, but I would say this was part of a dock at one time. Mm -hmm. Probably Roland's dock. Mm -hmm. Let's see by the way it's splintered up here. It's probably pine or... Oh, What's that? Oh, this will give me a splinter. Oh man, that absolutely stings. Yeah, wood will do that. From now on, if you dredge a board or just a piece of wood, sand it down before you bring it in. That goes for everybody. Yeah, don't put this on me, Kim. I'm sorry, you're right. You're right, it, it, it was my fault. It's just, you know, splintered wood is, is, is dangerous. Well, think for a second, Kim. If I took the time to sand it down, then it wouldn't be freshly dredged, would it? And you always say, you always say that union rules prevent you from appraising things that aren't freshly dredged. Yes, now that is right. I just, oh, this, just this, right, this just wasn't safe. Oh, so now I gotta sand everything down before I bring it in or else you won't appraise it. And I can't sand something down before I bring it in or you won't appraise it. Which is it, Kim? Okay, I, I, maybe I was hasty, okay? So just please settle down, we can work this out. Well, you upset me and I feel like I'm being accused of something here. I am sorry. I did not mean to, to accuse you of anything, okay? I was clumsy. I gave myself a splinter and then I got frustrated, okay? It is my fault and I am sorry. Very sorry. Please forgive me. I don't know. Please.
when we come back, a ribald t-shirt really shakes things up. I am Santonio Parker, and welcome to Helcomb County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal. <laughs> now, it is with a heavy heart that I must take the reins of tonight's show. As you may have already read, my older brother Kim has been hospitalized with a tragic infection from a pine splinter. And we wish him a speedy recovery. Get better real soon, big brother. The freshwater-based appraisal game just isn't the same without you. But where dredge appraisal is called for, Santonio answers the call. Whether it is to pinch a praise for my frail older brother, or as the host on my own hit fuse show, Judge Dredge. Let's take a look, shall we? So come with me and let us judge the dredge. Virgil King, what have you dredged? Not too sure. Uh, looks like something to add technology. Let's take a look, shall we? All right, well, offhand, I'd say it's a Gateway 4016 desktop computer tower from 2004. Now, uh, I do notice that you uh, scuffed the outside case with your bucket dredge, didn't you, Virgil? It's a clamshell, actually. <laughs> of course, a clamshell. But suppose I did. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Never apologize, Virgil. Mm-hmm. Now, Kim would have said something about water. It hurts a machine like this. My brother, he's a little old-fashioned. What did you think, Virgil? Well, I thought they'd clean the mud out of there. It might just unclog its pipes. Hmm. What a very interesting notion, Virgil. Unfortunately, I just don't see any way that the computer tower can be salvaged. But... All is not lost. Why, I've seen defunct computer towers like this sell for upwards of uh, $50. $50? <laughs> oh, wow. I never I didn't think of it when I drenched it. Thank you, Santonio. Thank you. My pleasure. I am very pleased to make your acquaintance. I am Santonio. Yes, I've heard about you, Santonio. Oh, well, everything you've heard is true. I am great. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, uh, what is your nom? Denise. From the Greek Dionysus, god of winemaking. How is it, Denise, that we've never met? Well, I just started working for the city on dredging Team B under uh, Eba, the African guy. Ah, yes. Yes, Eba. <laughs> he has brought me many items before. Mm -hmm. Valuable items. And some not so valuable. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, I just brought this raincoat we dredged. <sighs> Please continue. Um, that's it. It's, it's a raincoat. Hmm, okay. All right. Uh-huh. Well, this raincoat is quite a few years old. And it has several holes in it. And the stitching, much of it is frayed. Okay. I'm going to be completely honest with you because I believe in honesty. I could not appraise this raincoat for more than $80. Oh my. Oh yes, it is quite a dredge. 
<laughs> you will be celebrating tonight at Emanuel's for sure. Emanuel's? What? You've never been to Emanuel's? Oh, but Emanuel is a good friend of mine. I've appraised many an invaluable item for him. Uh, I'm sure that I could get you the Lakeview table tonight. At sunset? All right. Sunset. Anyone who does not have a Groupon, if you do not have a Groupon, let's, let's go stand, ahead no, stand on here, this side. Are we ready? Hello. Why don't you tell us where you got this? Oh, uh, me and my son, we used a net and we caught this china bowl. Okay. It's a porcelain bowl, uh, crate and barrel, circa 2000, and I'm afraid it's broken. The dried mud is holding it together right. here. I'm appraising this bowl at $1.30. But still, it's fancy. Is it worth something because it's fancy? Sir, please. It is a very busy day. OK, well, judging by the muck alone, you dredged this from the swamp, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, there was a reason. You did not see others dredging the swamp, you know? Oh, Lord, it's a, it's a corpse. How do you get like that? OK, the, uh, there appears to be some kind of a, uh, a gull with two heads. Okay, th th this is something called polycephaly. When did it die? I, I really don't know. Genetic mutation like this normally results in death. Freak stuff like this is worth something, though. Right? It's just to some people, yes, it is. Uh, forty dollars to the right person, though I do not know who, and I hope never to meet him. Please move along. Not even wet. I just pull things out of the swamp because I'm scared to go out in the lake. Of course, that makes me a freak with these guys. Guess that's what I've always been freak. Freak of the whole canyon. All right, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> yeah, this was down by the swimming area near the state park. It's like an old silverware set. And I can see by the inscription at the base that this is the work of George Smith III, a late 19th century Please English don't stand silversmith. Don't stand on that. Yes, one of the true masters of British silver. The case is also beautiful, but I see it has sustained some damage. You were using a backhoe? No, no, I just found it in the lake. I didn't dredge it. Oh, no. Is the damage going to hurt the value? Well, I'm sorry, I cannot say another word. Excuse me? I need you to pack this up and get out of here. Well, you can't appraise it? No, I certainly cannot. I am a dredge appraiser. This is not a dredged item. I've already put myself at serious risk of litigation just by letting you into this gym. Not to mention what the dredgers union will say when they hear about this. Okay, at least this. give me a, someone to refer us to appraise it. Sir, I've tried being polite with you. Now I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist that you vacate. God! I'm sorry, I didn't... This Groupon thing was just a horrible idea. I could lose my license for this. Uh, oh, Santonia would love that. Well, I yanked up my clamshell, this being before I got a powered rig, 
and uh, out comes nothing but clay. I'm sorry, I should have explained. Um, I was dredging at Lake Cone, which everybody knows is all gravel, uh, it being a man-made lake. So yeah, it was um, clay instead. I'm sorry, I, I didn't do that very well. This week on Helcom County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal, four worthless items. Good evening. Why don't you tell us a little bit about these books here? Uh, well, we were uh, working on this mechanical dredger up Appleton Way, and uh, we opened up the clam shell, and in with all the silt and bed soil, we found all these books and papers and what have you. Sovereignty above all. The enemy looms, Israel and the new millennium. The myth of Palestine. Well, you, you've uncovered some Zionist literature here. What are you saying like that for? Like what? Nothing. Obviously, these books have suffered some damage from being at the bottom of a lake for several years. Oh, yeah? I would say you could probably sell these books for 10 to 25 cents to someone who's studying the effects of lake water on different types of paper. Yeah, yeah uh, that wasn't what I was hoping to hear. Uh, look, if you have a problem with my appraisal, you are welcome to go on Judge Dredge like everyone else in this town. You know, or maybe I'll just go to somebody who's not so anti-Israel. <laughs> Excuse me? I am not anti-Israel. You've been running Israel down this whole appraisal. I have nothing but respect for the Jewish people. The other day, a friend and I were saying that the anti-Israel sentiment is the last socially acceptable form of racism in this country. And Santonio had a good point. He said that- Santonio, <laughs> of course. This is absurd. Then pledge your loyalty to the state of Israel. I am sorry but I refuse to do anything to compromise my appraisals. All right, they're gonna hear about this at the next Dredger's Israel Public Affairs Committee, you bet. Hi there, it's me, Kim. Before we move on to our next appraisal, I just wanted to say that I love Jewish people. I truly do. And anyone who implies differently is, is, is peddling falsehoods. I mean, I mean, One time, a dredger, cage full of live chicken. Don't know how they got down there or how they stay alive. It was a queer thing. So we're pulling them on board, and I turn around, and the devil's standing there. Turns out it was just a dream. Today on the finale episode of Halcombe County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal, it's the largest valuation in Halcombe County Municipal Lake Dredge Appraisal history. This could be worth quite a bit. We are here with Kranst, who has dredged up what we think might be something truly special. Now on this most recent dredge, you pulled up what you think might be a painting of some kind. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Let's have a look. Yes, I, I think you're right. Well, judging from what I can see here where some of the mud has, has dripped away, I'm gonna say this is an oil painting. And well, given the style and brush strokes, it is late 14th to early 15th century Europe. And it has withstood damage from the lake water remarkably well. This could be worth quite a bit. Yes, the coarseness of the grains here suggests that th this has been down there for, wow, two centuries or more? Oh, here we go. This stamp on the back of the canvas tells me that this comes from a small monastery 
known for a belief in mysticism. They, they were part of a breakaway Franciscan sect that, uh, in the Bavarian Alps that, oh. that, that practiced... Uh... <laughs> it's you. Well, that, that's, that's just a, a coincidence, I'm sure. It, It's you, all right. No, I don't have that scar. Yet. Yes. So how much is it worth? I can't appraise that. There's, there's no established market value for, for, for a portrait like that. Kim, so, will you not appraise this? Yes. Conservative estimate, it's based on other paintings of a, of a similar style, a similar class, I would say $150,000. Oh